Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and I have a floss tube video for you. First the coffee and my drink up Grinches and I have a shirt that says Black Cat Fan Club. It's true. Speaking of black cats, I got one right here at my feet and one sleeping over there. Mm. Guys, I haven't done a floss tube in forever. But I also don't have a whole ton to share because I'm pretty monogamous stitcher, I found. So like this weekly update doesn't really work for me. I haven't been shopping too terribly much and yeah. But I will show you all the things I've been purchasing. I've been gifted, stuff like that. Uh, so first, <laughs> my um, one of my co-workers, LaVon, gave me this. I was on the hunt for a 5x5, five 4x4, five, four four. I think it's a 6x6 six six square. So when I make my bags, I like to have a smaller ruler. That will come in handy here in a minute. And then Rachel sent me a package in the mail I got today, which was super nice. Um, these are patterns from magazines, and she thought I would like them. I can't show too terribly many of them because, um, you know, they're not, they're not mine to share. But they're like English. I don't want to show you the... The actual pattern this one is pray for peace grow in love share your joy and it's done in rainbow which i love and then there's just all kinds of these oh look at this fall one and i don't know what magazine they're out of um to be honest with you i don't know what month or year in the magazine that they count they came out of but there's all kinds of coffee stuff oh these are adorable coffee beans oh this is cr uh, crossstitching.com is this one and there's a bunch of just different this is not pattern this is just showing you what the patterns are. look at that coffee bean i must do that one for my tree to go look at that a little cup pot, coffee pot. I need to do that one. Oh, how exciting are these? I don't, it doesn't tell me what month or year the magazine is out of. Oh, I need to do this one, this to go container. This is right up my alley, guys. Oh, I'm so happy. And then there is an English series. So here's some tea time. And then like some English tea. And this is, I believe, Just Cross Stitching as well. Yeah, these are all from Just Cross Stitch. And then there's, look at this little, there's like uh, little cottages. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here's a bingo one. It says my favorite pastime is bingo. I did play bingo. Um, so that was so nice of her. She printed these all, or uh, pulled these out of a magazine to share with me. So thank you, Rachel. I really, really appreciate that. It was so sweet. I can't wait to get some of these stitching because this is my year. And I, I'll explain a little bit while I show you my finishes. Um, but I'll tell you, this is my year that I wanted to do a bunch of ornaments. And so I'm kind of rotating between a few things an ornament every month. Um, I have this Christmas thing going that I'm doing a little piece of every month and then I am working on a bigger project. So let's start with my works in progress. This is by the one and only Ellen Reed of Max Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's not, but it's always very entertaining. Um, and this was her first full design I believe it says maximum cross stitch our designs go to 11 and it says there's always room and it is this adorably beautiful um sampler so I'm actually doing a stitch along a terrible job at it but this is where I'm at so I did get my whole border in I got the two berry bowls. This is a border in between where the house is going to sit up here. And this is um, 
there's a saying that goes in there. I believe it says there's always room at the table. Yeah, I'm not doing one over one on 36. So she also gives you an uh, alternative and I'm just gonna type welcome. I have a needle stuck here so I know how many stitches to go in on the other side. <laughs> um, so I am a huge panicker about my border. So I always try to do the border first. The border is not complete as you can see. Um, well, you probably can't see, but there's the inside flowers are done, but there's going to be some large flowers here. And then on the outside, there's some more flowers, but I just wanted to make sure I had the border connected because I had to rip it out. I know. And this is done on Roxy Floss Co. 36 count porcelain. It's way more than I need. I think I bought a quarter of a yard or a stitcher's quarter, fat quarter. But um, whatever's left, and pretty much now I can cut it out, and then I'll have extra to make ornaments or whatever. Um, it's this beautiful color. And I think the lighting in here is pretty true and spot on. Now, the pattern does call for Roxy Floss Co., which I pulled from my stash. And then whatever I didn't have in my stash, except for the taupe, I did order the taupe for the house. Because that's a pretty big house, and I wanted it to be true. But the rest, I either had the Roxy or I used DMC. I have a lot of DMC. So right now, other than some a few skeins that I have random, I'm strictly stitching with either DMC or Roxy, and I'm just making it work. I love my Roxy. You're going to see I got a whole bunch of it in the mail, and I love it. So I'm going to use it. And if I have to make it work, I make it work. So I'm actually doing a stitch along on here if there's it's such a loose stitch along like if you're stitching this great share on instagram let's all share together um so this gets some love every month and i would like to have this finished but we'll see because i'll show you what else i'm in the process of working on so i am working on and i don't want to take this out of my cue snap but so each one of these, this is November, December, January, but I didn't start in November. Yeah, November, December, January. And then February was late or something. I, I don't know. I think I'm behind. But this is where I'm at. And again, this is all Roxy Floss Co. that I just made work. So these are designs. And they're coming out once a month. They are by Tiny Modernist right so this one came out in november this one came out in december this one came out in january and somehow i only have february maybe march hasn't come out yet i don't know i'm confused on the timing and i've tried communicating with the crazy annies but i don't ever get a response from them so i'm a little not sure what's happening here but this is the next one. So if you, let me take this out of the bag because I'm gonna work on it here actually soon. Um, it's a, I'm, it's a club. So you, it's one pattern a month and you can stitch them as ornaments or what I'm doing is connecting them all together. So I'll go and stitch this wall, this piece of the border and then I'll stitch the middle and then the next one will go here, the next one, and then up here. So I will have them all on one piece, which is fine. You can do that. Um, like I said, I have converted this to Roxy Floss Co. And it's a card. It's like $11 a month. And you su you're supposed to get one a month. I haven't been billed for the next one for part five. So I'm not really sure what's happening. I'll try emailing again to find out what's going on, but I have not been billed. So there's that. I think they're a little over there in over their head with a bunch of clubs and stuff and they got a little buried. So I've been keeping, and here's my, <laughs> my floss mess for, oh, these are just extra DMC. So if I need a random color, I have those, but the floss for, here it is. The floss for this project, and I I bought the little, um, they're calling it a floss, a, it could be a needle minder because there is a magnet, but it's very heavy. Um, it is the Woodland Christmas 
And so I purchased this charm and then I had made these in the winter. So these are all of my colors that I have introduced so far. And then these are a couple randoms that like you may need a stitch here or a stitch there, but these are the main colors. So I had to order some more because these are from a club, but this is the green that I'm using and this green, this is the pink. This is like the red, but it's more of a pink, the white, and then the brown. And these are pretty much your main, your main colors, but look at those. I mean, it's very pretty and I love the pattern and I'm super excited to stitch it. I keep these in here in case I need any random colors. Um, I just wish they were a little more communicative, you know, because I don't. Guys, it's doing some crazy stuff here in Ohio, and I'm also off kilter a little bit. It's been like off and on crazy snowing, blizzarding all day. I don't know. Anywho, this is my... Um, ever tote Christmas bag that I ordered this year with my project. I'll show you the finished project. I love this bag. So I'm keeping all of my Christmas stuff right now. I have this, all the, this project in this bag. Also, I have, um, some random ornament stuff, which is also what I use for those extra skeins of floss. They're just leftover from projects. So as I'm doing little ornaments, I'm trying to use them up just so I'm not being wasteful. Okay, and one other project I created this year is I made this. I am, oh, it's back. I'm obsessed, you guys. So I watched Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, and I may have showed you some of this before and I don't remember, but I don't think so. Anyway, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch did a tutorial on the folio. Now, I have two retreats planned for this year already. I have one in May and one in October, and then next year I'm going to Ireland and then England for another retreat. And I wanted one bag that I could put all my projects in. Now, this fabric is French general. No, this is Dutch, a Dutch design. The inside is French general, and it's a folio, right? So this is definitely French General, and I think this, I don't remember, maybe, maybe it's French General. It doesn't matter, does it? Anyway, you have a pocket here, so I can slide a pattern or two, really, is meant three down in here. And then on this side is vinyl, right? So this opens up, and it will store my floss, and my floss will stay clean, in here and it shouldn't get all tangled up and then I can leave it in there and zip it. I gotta find the zipper bottom. Zip it up and then I made, which is upstairs, a little Altoids tin travel. I got a little tiny pair of scissors, a little tiny pair of tweezers, some needles and threaders and that's gonna be the whole kit. And when I travel, especially when I go overseas, um, this is it, this is my whole bag. Now, if I get crazy and I make a smaller one, which I may make one like half this size to travel with, um, we'll see. Depends what I decide to bring with me, but I'm obsessed. So when I go to my retreat in May, I will have all my projects right in here and this can just lay on the table. And then this also works as like my perimeter, right? Or this could be my little perimeter and I could lay all my stuff on top of it. But it's just everything. And I'm so proud of myself. Did you see that quilting? I did that. I know. It's exciting. So I'm definitely going to be making more of these. Also, I don't like binding. I'll throw that out there. But it's fine. It looks better than it does in my head. But I think the next time... I make this, I will stitch one side and then hand bind, hand stitch the interior maybe, or vice versa. We'll have to see because I'd have to do the hand stitching on the outside because that's plastic, but we'll see. But I made that. I know. And it's different than just a regular project bag, which I love. I love all the project bags. Okay. Ooh, I'm leaning over because we are going to get into some finishes. And then some acquisitions. I told you I didn't really have a whole lot going on 
because I have been kind of sticking to, oh, sorry, sticking to a schedule. So I have my first ornament done. This was my January finish. Um, ooh, I just got gold in my coffee. Let's not do that, okay? This pattern is from Rose McGowan. No, lies. Jeanette McGowan. Um, and it was a freebie at Christmas. It's just a purple hippopotamus because we want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And then this tassels came from Target. I got a whole bag of them and they're all different colors, but they're big like that. And I just thought this was cute. And then this wood came from the Target dollar spot, just a plain ornament. And then I just put some rickrack behind it and attached it. And there's my hippopotamus. So here was my ornament number one that I finished in January. Like I said, I'm trying to do an ornament a month. This is ornament number two that I finished in February and it says jingle all the way. I totally changed all the coloring on this. Again, I'm using these Christmas ornaments as a stash buster. So whatever I have out and handy, that's what I'm using. I will show you this, this fabric is everything. It is 36 count arboreal from Cedarville, Cedar River Linen Co. And then that's just our antique button that I stitched on. And then I just, I mean the bag is a little, I need to put some more back here, but that's just, it's a matting, mat board. And then I did the front with mat board and then I just glued this little fuzzy around the edge and put a rickrack tie on it. And that is ornament number two. This pattern I got out of the Jingle Ball pattern book. So all, I'm sure you've heard of the Jingle Ball. And if you went, all the designers submitted small ornaments. So my next one is from Jeanette McGowan as well. And it's going to be, that I'm doing in March. And it's a giraffe. Oh, I can't wait. Holding a candy cane. I cannot wait to stitch that. So that will, that'll be my next one, but this is my finish that I did in February. So at the end of the year, I should have 12 ornaments. My next finish is, C is for coffee, and this is by Heartstring Samplery, and this was an older pattern of hers, I believe, uh, but Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts did a stitch along. You're not going to be able to see it very well because of the lighting, but it says C is for coffee in the steam of the coffee. Let me try to get this better for you. So in here in the steam, it says C is for coffee. I changed all the colors as well. And also over here on this side, mm -hmm, I did a whole lot of fudging to get that to work. So fun fact, I had COVID when I stitched this and I think it was like fever stitching and nothing lined up and I don't care. I mean, it's fine. I think it's adorable and I'm going to hang this in my kitchen over my coffee bar. So I need to find a little six um, by six frame for it for that. And then, or maybe I'll just get a hoop, like a six inch hoop. Cause I think it's five inches across. So I think a six inch hoop should work to hang this up and this is the first project i ever stitched on 40 count linen and i'm so proud of me i did one floss over two and then this is all just um scrap scrap floss i know the red is follow red the blues everything is just kind of scraps that i had um 40 count dirty porcelain from Roxy Floss Co. And there, all the Roxy Floss and fabric can be purchased through Evertote. And I will put the link down below because um, that's where you will purchase it from. And it's great. And as an American, we get the benefit of the exchange rate. So it's, mm, I mean, it, it does, it seems like it's right in line for me what I'm paying in the U.S., so I'm sorry if my Canadian neighbors are paying more. I'm sorry. Oh, don't get lipstick on your cross stitch. So that is my finished project that I've done since January. This actually was my latest finish. 
um, in December, and I can't remember if I showed you this, but I finished this little penguin. He is so cute. This, I picked up this pattern in England at the retreat I was at over the summer, and it's Caterpillar Cross Stitch. She puts out um, kits on mostly on Ada. I think this is 16 count, could be 14, questionable. Uh, but he's a little snowman. And the only thing I changed was in this snow and the snowflakes, I used some white etoile. So it has some silver sparkle. And I think I put some gold down here in that star. But everything else is the fab or the floss that came in the kit. And it was um, DMC. I love it. Next year, I'll get this put uh, or uh, finished so I can, I've got so many things to finish, but I'm just having fun stitching. And then what will happen is I will get in the mood to finish things and then I'll just go through and finish them. I have a whole bag of finishes. Um, my next finish was my stitch along. So through the Roxy Floss Co., Jacob, a modern folk embroidery and Caroline of Evertote put out last year an advent calendar. And in the advent calendar in the kit, you got um, the fabric, the pattern, and 25 skeins of floss. Some, were, um, some of the floss was um, one of a kind. Some of it will be repeated. You don't really know, but I have it all. That's why I say I have a lot of, I have a lot of Roxy floss. Plus, I've belonged to her floss club for well over a year now. I'm obsessed. Let's just say that. And I, I love it and I love supporting them. So this was the band sampler that Jacob created. And I'm so proud to say I finished this like the day after Christmas, maybe two days after. But this was the band sampler. So every day you opened up floss, a different color floss and a different pattern piece of this pattern. And at the end of the, at the end you had a completed thing and i think i might make a cross stitch bag out of this so here was my thought making a folio right but this is the cover of the folio so it would be it would fit this size and i would just put a small border around it to hold the stitching in and that would be the cover right but it would have to open, it would open this way, I guess. It wouldn't matter. Some people, which I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm not going to do that, but they did this way, right? Separating it or just folding it over and making a really cute needle book. Or I can just put frame it and hang it on my wall or I can make a project bag out of it. I don't know. I'm riddled, I'm riddled with indecision so nothing will happen. Truth. Um, I'm thinking that I would like to make a half size of this just to travel with overseas because I'm really trying to do all carry on. So that's kind of what's in my head and I have a year. Uh, my last finish, I think I showed you, but maybe I didn't, and I just realized it's not 100% finished. This is my temperature chart for the year of 2022. So every shelf represents a different month, and every book represents a different day in that month and the high temperature of that day. <laughs> what I'm missing is I think that's September. I forgot to put the little doodah in, so I'll go through and put something in there, but... This is the bookshelf for 2022 and I worked on this and I finished it. I finished it before the, uh, on the 1st of January. I was so proud of myself. So this is one year's representation and a finish. So I need to, hi sir, Wait, but why are you sitting on everything? Get off, you big. Yeah, you big. Come on, get off there. He's sitting on my stuff. So this will definitely get framed and go on the wall. I, this will be a specialty frame. So I need to measure and figure out what size frame I need to order. This was done. It was a very interesting stitch. It was done on Fiddler's cloth, which I had never worked with before. Um, I really liked the holes and the texture because I knew that there would be a lot of 
negative space behind the books. So I feel like this just kind of gives it this retro vibe that I'm really digging. So I have that, need to iron it and finish it because not finished. And this is my, <laughs> another Caroline Evertote bag that my boys absolutely love sleeping on, but I've been keeping my finishes in here that haven't been done yet. So I did this last summer be nice or buzz off. I haven't finished that, which I want to for this summer. And last Halloween, or two years Halloween, I finished that. I think it was two years ago. Um, and I have to go with that some Lady Dot. Yeah, Lady Dot Creates. It came in the kit. And then I, I have the gingham to finish it. <laughs> Guys, I'm terrible, apparently. So I have this bag of some random fabrics, but mostly it's finishes that have not been finished. It's like the land of the lost over here. But I figure if I keep all of them together, like I said, um, I will eventually get them all finished. Especially this one, I'm super excited. So I need to decide if it's weird Oh, also a little fun fact, most of my finishes have drips of coffee on them. I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of reality around here. Mm -hmm. All right, purchases. What have I purchased lately? Not a whole lot. I did purchase a pattern. Actually, I've purchased a couple patterns. Let me see, this one is for sure. That was C is for coffee. Okay, here's two. Okay. We'll do this first. So this is by Poutini Poutini Books and Cats. I'm trying to make sure. So this is, you know, a bookshelf. And it says, a house is not a home without books and cats. And then there's like a girl holding a cat. And then there's the cats over here. And this is reality, right? In my life. She came out this year with a, what I'm calling a companion piece to this. It's a, um, a girl sitting, you see her back and there's a clock and bookshelves and it says just one more chapter. So I got that to, to stitch for somebody this year and then I will have the companion piece at my house and then eventually that somebody will have this in their house because she gets it if I croak. That's how this things work. So I bought that and then I ordered from Market the other one that's coming out. I just don't have it yet. C is for coffee. We saw that pattern that I purchased to do this. So I have a bag around here somewhere that holds all of my finished patterns and eventually I have to kind of decide what I'm gonna do. But then I saw this, again with the Maximum Cross Stitch because I love her. She created this little sweet pattern for Caroline because it says a dog and they're human. And that is Caroline and that's Nuna and that's Caroline's house and her bush. And apparently Caroline wears a purple dress when she walks Luna. So I'm going to be personalizing this to somebody else. My girl doesn't have blonde hair. She has brown hair. Her dog is black, not white. Her house is a mint green, -ish, greenish color with a pink front door. So I'm going to personalize this. So I grabbed this. Now, these patterns, you can buy hard copy patterns from Evertote. Or you can go on to the Maximum Cross Stitch and print get a PDF printed, which is what I did with this one. It's just as easy for me to print it as it is to buy the hard copy. So I have the printed copy of that and I wanna start that soon because I think if I do it small enough, like on that 40 count, it might be ornament shape or size for that person that I'm making it for. So I grabbed those. I did order some patterns. I think I ordered three patterns that were coming out from market. A bunny pattern. I got the Poutini Poutini and all oh, for the life of me. I can't remember what the other one was. I just emailed. Who did I email? Keepsakes down in Cincinnati and they're mailing it out to me. So next time I record, you'll see that. 
Um, also in the land of purchases, I found these and I'm going to have to move something here. Let me find the, I'm going to have to find the Etsy store, but I was wanting Kohana scissors. So Kohana's are Japanese scissor. They're an embroidery scissor. So they're like that long. They're very expensive. I mean, they're like $120 a pair. I didn't buy that pair. <laughs> I did not buy that pair. I purchased from the store this little tiny pair of Kohanas um, so I can travel with them. So it's like this big and you just with your thumb and forefinger and they'll snip threads when I fly because I'm trying to go like minimalist. So I bought those and they fit in an Altoids tin. They're that small. So I grabbed those. But the store also had um, Japanese silk. I don't know what this is about and I need to do some research, but I bought them. So it's like shades of green and shades of pink and purple and they had all different colors. It was $5 for the, this. It's all in Japanese, so I have no idea how much I purchased. I don't know, but I thought it definitely looks like you would just use one strand. It's not like six strand floss. I think you definitely just use one strand and it's very shiny and so pretty. There you go. That's pretty decent representation. So I can't wait to kind of dive into this and probably for my, an ornament, like I'll just pick an ornament and make it with these. So I thought this is adorable. So I grabbed that and then there was some fabric and with cats all over it playing with yarn. Um, and I believe this is a hand design. Like somebody drew this and then they created the fabric. And it is cotton and it's quilter's cotton. Let me see. It says the design is designed by Hannah for QH Textile. So Hannah designed this, whoever Hannah is. Good job, Hannah. So I want to make a little something. And this may end up being a cat blanket for my boys. Um, because... I do make them blankets. Like, I hasten to call them quilts because they're not quilts. But I do sew squares of fabric together. And then I iron like a backing with some fusible fleece in the middle to hold it together. And I sew it down. So it's sort of, it's like pseudo quilting. I would not call it quilting. But they love them. And the beauty is I can lay it over stuff like the back of my couch or wherever. And they'll lay on the blankets. And then I can just throw them in the laundry. And they don't, I don't have to like lint roll my whole house. I can just wash their little blankets because they are both black and they shed a lot. So I thought this would be really cute for backing. And then maybe just find some coordinating or I could do this on the front. I don't know. It's a quarter of a yard. I think it's a quarter, maybe a half, but I think it's a quarter. Mm. No. I think that's a half. Whatever it is, it's going to be big enough. How about that? So I grabbed that um, along with those silks and the little mini Kohanas for crafting. Then I purchased, I needed some fabrics. You know, you need fabric. Well, first of all, I stole this fabric from a project that I didn't think I would end up doing. I <laughs> this is 36 count Billie Jean, and they're trying to tell me it's Billie Jean King, but this is straight up Michael Jackson, Billie Jean, because I'm singing it in my head every time I look at this fabric. Billie Jean's at my door, you know, this is, I think it's a fat quarter. Maybe it was for a project, whatever it is, but look at the, it's definitely more gray. What you're seeing, I'm seeing it more blue, but this is 36 count Roxy Floss Co. Billy Jean. It came in a kit. I decided I probably wouldn't do the pattern on the kit, which is fine. I ordered it with the Christmas bag last year. It came with this, a pattern, the floss, the whole shebang from Evertote. But I love this fabric, so I, I have pilfered it from the kit. I pilfered. Then I ordered, this is my 40 count dirty porcelain. And uh, this was a quarter of a yard. And this is all I've used of it. And I asked for Christmas some pinking shears, and it's working. 
Like I cut this with pinking shears and it doesn't seem to be fraying as much. Either that or Carrie just makes some really non-fraying fabric and I'm gonna choose to believe Carrie did that. Thank you, Carrie. Not that she watches my channel, but if she did. So this is what I wanna do a lot of ornaments on and practice. This is my one and only piece of 40 count and I love it. It's dirty porcelain, very, very neutral. Um, just good for all kinds of stuff. So I have that. And then uh, Trixie Tricycles or Jody. And if you don't know this, you're living under a rock. But I ordered this back in December. Cedar River Linen Design, Linen and Design. She lives, I believe, on the Cedar River in Portland and Oregon and Seattle, Washington. I don't know. Somewhere out there. Wait, wait. It should tell me, right? Washington, state of Washington, Cedar River Linen. Her name is Jody, and she is at um, cedarriverlinen.com. And she has a great story. A lot of her linens are based on natural elements and the water in the river and it's all very ecological and it's very uh, environmentally responsible so everything comes in biodegradable i love it um, and you also get this little tag that says cedar river so i bought a, she calls them a stitcher's eighth i call them a fat eighth of uh, this color is called arboreal or Arboreal, A-R-B-O-R-E-A-L. It is the best green. It's a moss green. Oh my God, I love it. I love green, guys. I stitched this on that. This is 36 count, which I will tell you my new sweet spot. I like the 40 count a lot and I will stitch with it again, but one over one on 40 count feels like two over two on 32 count to me. I like a little thicker coverage two over two on 36 count is where it is at for me i need to iron this it's a mess it's been upstairs wadded up so this is this color and i need to make another order because she has this pinky red color that is like to die for so this is the green look at, look at that variation in color i mean it's just gorgeous and i think this screams with something like monochromatic on it like one cream color or just something so the fabric pops oh i'm obsessed and then the other color i picked up from her is tephra t-e-p-h-r-a this is also i believe a fat quarter uh yes yeah, stitcher's quarter and uh yeah stitcher's quarter i only ordered these two to try it out now i will say that her process the weave is a little tighter than jody's 40. so this 36 felt like this 40 to me and it's all in the processing it happens you're getting a hand dyed hand created product so when you're buying fabric you know the weave just felt tighter on this green i haven't stitched with this tephra yet but look at it oh wait let me pull it back yeah that's it it's this mushroomy dirt deliciousness. It's dirt color and I love it. Um, I just love the earthiness. I'm a very earthy toned person. So I grabbed these. Shipping was fantastic. No issues whatsoever. So I feel like between Jody and Carrie, I have a fair amount of fabric. I would like to round out with that pinky colored. It's almost like clay. It's a clay color, like a pinky clay. And I need to look at, well, I'm going to see Carrie in May. So I will purchase some fabric and I will do a good video for you guys while I'm at Stitch North in Canada in May. And speaking of Carrie, the last thing I have is a bunch of new floss. And I'm going to take it out of the bags for you guys, mostly because I also need to go put it away. I have upstairs a container that I keep all of this in. Um, I ordered these for something, who knows, I don't even remember. But this is Back to the Fuchsia 
Hannah does a fantastic job naming this floss, by the way. So this is the most gorgeous fuchsia. And I didn't really have any color like that in my stash, so I picked it up. This is Cheshire, which is a burgundy. Oh, it is everything. And to me, I love stitching with like dark, 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 and then throw a pop of something in. And then this is Gomez, which I just needed a good black. for. I know what I needed this for, and I was out of black. I can use 310, but I love the, it's almost like a chalkboard that's been used and cleaned. I'm not sure. I'm sure she has a better description for it, but I love her black. So I grabbed these for my stash. And then I belong to the Neutrals Floss of the Month Club, which I want to get into the brights, but I'm terrified of losing my neutral, so I may have to just do both. I, I don't know. There's, there's decisions that need to be made, but she'll have all of her floss at the retreat, so if I need any colors, and it's not like I can't just order it. This is the January floss of the month club. So funny, this got lost in the, or returned to them, so I didn't get it to March, which is fine. But this is statuesque. Look at that gold. Oh, ugh. It's like these are perfect fall colors. Nobel, because you know, the Nobel Prize. Um, roses are gold. Carrie must have been feeling very gold when she did this month. This is, oh, irony. <laughs> That's a beautiful gray. A blue gray, almost like ice. It's so pretty. And this is ampersand, which is another black, but it's definitely a more black, a different black. Uh, that almost went in my pot of coffee, or my cup of coffee. It's a different black. So if you put them next to each other, this has a little more gray to it. This is more of a deeper black. So you need all the blacks, guys. I'm not kidding. And then this was the February Club. Um, so anyway, you can go onto their website and sign up. I think it costs me like 25 US with shipping. And I get five, eight yard skeins of the most gorgeous floss you will ever deal with. And it's just wonderful. Um, so this was Feb or February's. Oh my God, I just want a sweater out of all this. This is Timpani. This is Sequoia. Oh, look at that earth, that brown. This is spinach. I love all the greens. We've determined that, and that is the beautiful green. I think that's like the perfect green. This is Thursday. Mm, why not? It feels very maroony, but it's also very um, tonal, which I love. And this is Tuesday. And you can tell the difference of the, oh, that's not Thursday. That, my friends, was spinach. So they're in the same family, but this one is just, there are browns, but they're very burgundy brown, like a red brown. Rusty, ooh, rust. Yes, perfect. Then Carrie went through some rebranding, and look at her new brand. I love it. Roxy is her bird, and she has a little PSA on the back that I think we should all know. Please do not leave your scraps of floss, thread, or yarn outside as nesting material for birds as they may cause harm. Besides, we all know birds are good at gathering a stash as you are. It's true. And I'm assuming that the dyes, because a lot of this is like an acid-based dye, or I know on yarn it's acid-based, and you don't want to, you know, there's chemicals involved. So we're not giving these to the birds. And then she was very gray in March. Oh, poor Carrie. I have to call her, text her, see if she was depressed. But I, I'm living for it. So if this is what depression looks like, Carrie, I'm, on, I'm all about it. Sorry, Chicky, but I love it. Um, so we have Tempest. And look at the variegation. That is everything. And then we have Let Lead It Be. Lead, like as in a pipe. Uh, this one is Anchors Away, which is a blue-gray. I just love these colors. Greater, oh, Greater Porpoise. It, the, so it's like a dolphin. I love it. And this is Dutiful. 
as in dew, the dew of rain. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm obsessed. So I need to find a, something to stitch with all of the things. And I really just feel like I need to quit my job. Look at all that floss. So beautiful. So what I will do is go put all, I file mine away. When it's specialty floss, I file it in alphabetical order. And then my, you know, I can just go through my drawers if I'm looking for something to match. And then my, all of my DMC is filed by number. And I have a fair amount of that. So that, my friends, is everything I've been working on forever, it seems like. So I hope you enjoyed seeing where I was at crafting-wise and get your stitching going as well. Come join us on the Facebook group and you can share your progress on your different projects as well. All right, everybody, you have a fantastic day and I will talk with you later. Bye!